Hey there, nice to be with you again and this time I have here to show and review the Fnixi 5012H and Health Oscilloscope. This video is the first of a series where I will show you 5 oscilloscopes models with a bandwidth uh, from 100 MHz up to 120 MHz. That could be a nice alternative to a desktop oscilloscope and all of them are below the target price of 90 euros or more or less 100 dollars. This one was bought with the money I got from the affiliate links that allow me to buy this item for review and show you so you can do an informed purchase. Thank you all of you that use the affiliate links to help the channel and by the way if you have any shopping to do on AliExpress, Banggood or Amazon, please use the Tech Corners access link and you'll be helping the channel. But back to the oscilloscope. It is very compact. This one has 100 MHz bandwidth and has this rubber uh, cover to protect it. But this is just the beginning. Let me show you everything about it. So, as always, let's see what is delivered with this device. Uh, it comes uh, in this leather-like uh, uh, bag. It's nice. It's nice for storage. Let's open. I already opened this uh, before. Uh, the oscilloscope is this little device. It comes in this protective bag, normally. In the bag you have the certificate of quality and also the user manual. The user manual is the old format uh, FNIRSI manuals. It doesn't have very good information to be honest. Uh, I saw the new manuals that for example they did for this product and they are much better than this. But anyway it has uh, the basic information that you might need the keys, how they work, uh, the common problems uh, are here and they also have the common test methods for example to test a battery or DC volt voltage measurement, crystal measurement, inverter output so, yeah you have here some examples how to do some of the measurements we have a, a micro USB to USB type A uh, cable and the normal, uh, I believe this is the 6100 probe. I will take it out. So the device has this cover, uh, this rubber cover to, to protect it. It's, as I said before, quite compact. Uh, we have here the charging port and the power on and off button. On the top we have only the connection for BNC. We don't have the signal generator or waveform generator, square waveform for calibration. Uh, yeah, and that's what we have here. Well, I think that's a negative point that we don't have the output of the square wave for probe calibration. But yeah, that's what it is. This unit has some scratches on the screen. Uh, it arrived to me with, uh, yeah, you can see here the scratches. This is totally new, uh, or it should be, and it didn't have the protection, the, that filter that uh, they put on the screen to protect, and arrived like this, uh, and that's a pity. So let's see how this works. So let's start this up. Yeah, it boots quite fast. Uh, this device is very similar, let's see, in terms of size with the DCO TC2. This is a multi-tester and oscilloscope. The screen, it's somehow, let me put this in oscilloscope. It's somehow uh, similar. 
I still think this one is a little bit better in terms of image, but it's very similar. Uh, in terms of size, it's a little bit uh, smaller than the TC, uh, TC2, but yeah, it's, it's the, in the same range of size. But if you saw my video about the DSO Pro, this one, this device has a lot of uh, similar similarities with this one. The size, uh, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, it has the, the DCO Pro, uh, the same keys almost, but the, the, um, the, the layout, it's a little different. It's uh, also a, a little bit smaller in terms of size, but the similarities are very noticeable. The power button is in the same place as it is the charging port, the USB charging port. Also one uh, BNC on the left side without the output for the square wave signal. If you power on the DSO Pro, let's power both at the same time. You can see that this one is a little slower, but in terms of the design, the, the screen, it's very similar. Also the options of the menu, as you can see, the options are yeah, almost the same. You have here the, the measure that this one doesn't have in the menu, uh, but I do believe that you have measures, I think. Let me see if I remember if you put the measures on. Yeah, but they appear at the same time. In this one, I will show you in a bit how it works. But the options uh, are more or less the, the same. We have here the multi buffer that if I'm not wrong, yeah, the multi buffer is the uh, afterglow in this one. They have different names. It's weird because it's the same brand. And yeah, if you if you see, it's almost the same options, and the options on the top and on the bottom are also uh, basically the same. But this one is 100 megahertz, and this one is five, I believe, five megahertz. So there is a, a huge difference between the both of these devices. Now, again, coming back to the to this one. We have uh, the, the options that I show you in the keyboard layout. The menu opens this menu. You have a few options here. You have the first one to view wave. The view wave is the result uh, when you use the, this button, the save wave. You will save the waveform in memory and you can see the results in here. I will show you in a bit how it works. You, ha you also have the Volton measures, measurements and also the time measurements. For that, you just go here. The mode, it will operate uh, in here in a way, but you can also use it in this place as the OK button or the Select button. Okay. In here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six options, six voltage. Uh, peak to peak, uh, I don't know this one, uh, the max, the minimum, the average, RMS, and I don't remember this one. So, and in time measurement, also you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six measurements that is cycle plus and left, uh, the frequency and the time that you can show on the screen. Let me show you, for example, I will activate this one, the frequency. If you take the menu out of the way, it will show you here in the bottom and you can have up to 12 options. Uh, you can select every one of those options. Okay. So right now I will take this out. Uh, you have also the show grid. It's basically what it says. You can have the grid or not. Uh, the out of 50%, you can enable it or disable it. You have the afterglow and I will show you what is the afterglow uh, after I connect here my signal generator. And you have the calibration option and the brightness also 
as you can see, it's very simple. I have the brightness uh, in the maximum. You can change it, for example, for four. And as you can see, the brightness is adjusted. Six, yeah, it seems okay. So in terms of menu, this is uh, the option that we have. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the screen, we have here the mode. You have this mode. Uh, with this cross, you can move the cursors around when you have that cross. And when you have this circle with the plus sign, the up and down buttons will change the voltage division, as you can see in here. Increase, decrease, okay. And the left and right, you will change the time division in here. You have also the auto, it works okay for, for the tests I made. You have here the voltage indication and this one, uh, the times the indication, the frequency, it will show you in here. The battery uh, charge, rising or falling edge, the trigger, DC or AC, you can change it easily with this button. Uh, the trigger also changes with this button in here. And you can use these keys over here to change the trigger to move. As you can see, the cursor of the trigger is moving. Uh, let me, it's normal not right now. So you have the time, uh, the time division. If it's running or if it's stopped, Okay, the voltage division, as I showed you before, and also if it's the probe one time or 10 times. Okay, pretty simple to operate, as you see. I will now power on my function generator and let's connect here a cable to see how it handles, uh, well, the the different signals and with the different bandwidths. As you might know, uh, if you follow the channel, my function generator can go up to 100 megahertz. So I can test this device up to 100 megahertz using the function generator. So I have my function generator already powered up. Let's uh, start the, the signal. Uh, I will start with uh, a bandwidth of one kappa, a uh, signal of one kappa hertz. Let's do auto. Okay. It seems okay. It detected 100, uh, one kappa hertz. It says the VPP is 10.3. Uh, I would like to know how to change this information. Uh, tu, tu, tu. Uh, okay, so we okay, so it seems that pressing F1 we can have here in this place different values the RMS of the signal, the average, the minimum, the, the maximum the voltage and the peak to peak. I will stay with the voltage right now. Okay, the voltage. And F2 must be something to do, yeah. In F2 you have different information in, in here. You have the frequency, the time, division, uh, plus time, the maximum, the minimum, and the dirty cycle percentage and the dirty cycle minimum percentage. I'm not using a square wave right now, so the dirty cycle is always on 50%. Nice, nice. Okay, let's put this in time division. So we have the voltage and the time division. Um, okay. It seems... It's not like that, but yeah, frequency. And the second one, it's, well, this one, it says always nanoseconds. Okay, seems okay. Let's improve the signal. Okay, let's move this to 10 uh, megahertz to see how it handles. 
uh, yeah it's in 10 megahertz auto set it's working okay very nice it responded fast so I will change this to VPP uh, on my function generator the VPP is set to 5 volts uh, so mm, I don't know why these values but yeah uh, in terms of signal it seems okay yeah okay before moving on to the uh, higher frequencies uh, right now we have 10 megahertz I would like to put the sweep working let's do auto set again and let me show you here in the menu what the afterglow does okay I will put the afterglow at 8 it's the maximum and as you can see right now it leaves a drag on the signal uh, there is different names for this uh, in this oscilloscope they call, call, call it the afterglow but yeah uh, we have uh, different names for this uh, this option uh, it's it's the buffer of lines that you have in the memory and yeah let me take this out okay so without the afterglow as they call it uh, yeah you have the normal signal it responds quite well at 10 megahertz uh, as you can see uh, right now i'm doing a sweep from uh, well right now from 100 hertz to 1000 kilohertz so yeah it's it's working okay let me turn this off and put here again the signal in frequency yeah so let's put the frequency again in 10 megahertz Opa. yeah we have the signal again in 10 megahertz we have a voltage division of 2 volts and 25 nanoseconds uh, in time okay let's see auto dc ac the rising or falling edge this is pretty simple to use to to be honest i don't see here anything that uh, is harder to to do let's move this to 15 mega uh, 50 megahertz to see how it handles the signal he adapted immediately let's do a auto set to see okay the signal seems to be okay the maximum that we can do with this uh, bandwidth it's six nanoseconds and let's move this to 100 megahertz it's the maximum of my uh, oven xdg 200 and uh, 2100 uh, function generator and with this bandwidth the vpp is automatically adjusted to 2.5 uh, volts okay let me just increase here the amplitude and the maximum yeah it's also six nanoseconds the signal uh, is surprisingly as for me it's a surprise it's very stable to be honest it doesn't flicker or anything like this it seems to behave better in high bandwidth that on low yeah but yeah you cannot increase the the time division it will not accept anything more but with this one it's working quite well and i should say that i'm pretty satisfied with this uh, i think the signal at this well the sine wave it's not perfect it's very pointing but for 100 megahertz uh, this 60 euros uh, device yeah nice nice very nice so to end the bandwidth testing let's try some square waves 
uh, I have here a 10 megahertz square wave. Let me just diminish a bit. Yeah, it's not good. It's a little rounded and stuff like that. Let's put this in one megahertz to see. I just, yeah, this one, it's much better. This one, you can see the edges of the square wave. Okay, let's try something else. Uh, I have here a triangle wave, one megahertz, seems okay also. And some noise. Okay, so this one, it's a arbitrary uh, waveform that uh, it's provided by my function generator. It's a heart, and yeah, it's it was a little bit to to tend this to to display the the figure, but yeah, you can see it can refresh uh, quickly enough to to be able to display this this figure. It's 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 pretty cool to this kind of draws in the oscilloscope. Well, it's not the function of the oscilloscope, but even so, it's cool to be able to to use it to show this kind of information. And yeah, you have to, to use it in 200 uh, nanoseconds, but 200, something like that, 100 to be stable. But yeah, you can see it in here. Okay, so I will now connect my millivolt voltage reference board to see if we can trust the values in terms of uh, voltage that this device measures. I used PCBWay to manufacture a professional this board. They are the sponsors of this video and are currently commemorating their 8th anniversary with several promotions. Visit them to have awesome promotions like manufacturing 10 boards for five dollars you have below also the tech corner tv link that gives you a five dollars discount on your first purchase okay so i have here already my setup for testing the voltage with this device i should remind you this is not a voltimeter or a multimeter so yeah we have to to give it a, a little room to to fail <laughs> to be a, but this is a measurement device, so anyway, it should measure. Uh, first, I will check if all the values are okay. So we have the 10 millivolts, the 25 millivolts, uh, sorry, 25 millivolts, 50 millivolts, uh, 100 millivolts, it's 99.99. This one seems not to be working, should be the 250, so we are not going to use this one because it's not working. Uh, also, the 500 millivolts doesn't seem to work. And yeah, I don't know, maybe there is something wrong with this. So, 25, 50, 100, and that's it. All the others seems to be dead. I have to see what's going on with this. And we have 5 volts C. Ah, okay. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Uh, I forgot to change the... So we have the 25, uh, 250 millivolts. Yeah, it's near. We have the 500. Okay, it's good also. We have 1 volt. 98, yeah, almost, 2 and a half volts, and 5 volts. The 5 volts, it's not working, or maybe it's my bad. Yeah, but let's do the lower voltage first. Okay, so for 10 millivolts, let's see what he, he reads. Uh, okay, doesn't seem to, to have any signal on 10 millivolts. Let's try it with 25 millivolts. Uh, doesn't read anything also. 
50 millivolts not reading anything also and yeah I don't know what's going on here it doesn't seem to ah, okay so the first signal that he uh, he is able to to read is 500 millivolts okay so for 500 millivolts he detects uh, an rms of 440 millivolts mm, yeah it's near but it's the first signal the first voltage that he can detect for one volt he detects 960 millivolts it's also near uh, and for two and a an half volts it detects 2.48 and i think this one it's pretty damn near of the what the multimeter detected let me put this in here and see yeah 2.489 so this value it's very near or it's the same and let me see what we have on 5 volts 3.60 uh, that's the same I don't know why it's it should be 5 on the board but it's not far from the what we get also on the multimeter the weird part is we cannot get anything below 500 millivolts to report here yeah not 200 100 nothing below 500 millivolts so i believe this is the minimum he can handle in here we have let me just take the screws off okay i think i'm missing one okay all screws accounted so in here we have a battery 300 uh, milliamps hour or 3000 if you prefer so in terms of re uh, relevant uh, ic's in the this board we have the wind bound serial flash memory here it's a spi memory uh, we have a ARM processor let me show you uh, without reflection so this is the let me see this is a Cortex M4 core with 200 megahertz it's a very nice processor in this device uh, this one in the middle uh, is scratch I don't know what it is uh, probably is the screen controller the display controller we have here on the bottom the HC 148 it's a eight line to three line encoder we have two of them uh, let me see other relevant ICs let me see I okay we have the tp4056 this is a battery manager it handles the the charging of the battery so everything goes smoothly we have a bunch of 870c octocouplers in here and the relay the relay is the hfd43s okay and we have there in the corner near the the bnc a cosmo octocoupler also so yeah we have in here a 20 megahertz crystal i believe so the rest of the components are pretty common uh, we have uh, resistors and stuff like that nothing special i will now close this and conclude this review
This device cost me 59 and a half euros, including shipping and two discounts that I managed to get during some AliExpress promotion season. So let's round this to 60 euros, or more or less 62 dollars or 50 pounds uh, at July 2022 exchange rates. It's a pretty decent price for a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. It's true that it's pretty basic. You have no additional features, but if you just need an oscilloscope, this one will do the job very well. I was expecting something that will handle the bandwidth in a worse way, uh, but to my surprise, it handled pretty well the signal. I saw already bench oscilloscopes to handle way worse the 100 megahertz sine wave. So, if this video was in any way useful to you, don't forget to like it. And if you haven't already, slap that subscribe button and hit that bell to activate all notifications and be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Please don't forget that you can always help the channel by using the access links to AliExpress, Amazon or Banggood. I really appreciate your help and it will not cost you any more. That's it for today. Thank you for staying with me until the end and I hope to see you in my next video. Cheers!